Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. I hope that you'll join me tonight as I try and take a photograph of the planet Saturn. As of recording this video, it's almost perfectly at opposition and all that really means basically is that it's going to be at its closest to us here on Earth. Now that's going to give you the perfect opportunity to take high quality photographs of it because with it being that little bit physically closer, it's also going to appear that little bit bigger in your field of view. Just like the same sort of effect as we have when you get a super moon. It's just a little bit closer, so it appears a little bit bigger. Now, it's not all roses for me here in the UK, unfortunately. As on this particular year, uh, Saturn's not going to exceed 20 degrees of elevation from my location here. So uh, that's very poor when it comes to <laughs> time to take a quality planetary photograph, but all the same, it's clear and I'm not doing anything else, so why not take a shot at getting a personal best image of this planet? Now, as you can probably see already, I've gone ahead and taken my wide field deep sky imaging rig off the mount. That's the Celestron Rasset 8 that I usually use. In favor of putting on the Mead LX200, which is gonna be the perfect companion for these planetary captures. It's quite an old scope. It's probably about as old as I am really, uh, but that doesn't really matter. I think good optics, once they're made good and as long as they're looked after, they're gonna stay that way for an awful long time, certainly longer than this thing's been around. But all that I'm really gonna change between now and actually shooting Saturn is I'll be adding a two inch Barlow, an ED Barlow into the light path and that's gonna have the effect of making the planet appear again ever so slightly larger on the imaging sensor which by the way is a player one Neptune C2, which again is the perfect companion for this kind of imaging. Now when it comes to taking a high quality astro photo of any kind really, there are always gonna be a bunch of factors at play. Some of them that you can control and some of them are completely out of your hands and you have to just do the best with what you're given. And tonight and planetary astrophotography is absolutely no exception to that. So I don't know if you can see this on the camera there, but basically just above where the top of my scope is, that is where Saturn is going to be rising tonight. Now, this is bad because basically this is above a bunch of houses. We live in a built up area here and these are all quite old houses that were built around the time of World War One, World War Two, and uh, effectively they've got old roofs on them that give out a lot of waste heat. So that's going to affect the seeing quite badly from this location. Now, this is one of those factors I've just mentioned. I can't do anything about this aside from taking this scope somewhere to the middle of a field and uh, you know driving it out there but i don't want to do that i'm not going for any awards or anything like that at all i just want to take a personal best from right here in the comfort of my own observatory and that's the aim of tonight i just thought it was worth mentioning that there are always going to be these factors that matter probably from locations like mine far more than your scope ever will as you can see here on the screen i'm just using stellarium to double check uh, the planets rise and transit so just after it passes through the meridian it's going to be around about 20 degrees elevated with almost a fully illuminated moon just off uh, to its left now again not perfect but i'm going to do my best with what i'm given and still I'm, i think i'm gonna have a bunch of fun if i'm being quite honest with you i do like doing something different and this is definitely definitely out of my usual wheelhouse so uh, all that's left to do now is chill out and wait for it to get dark properly and uh, make, start making these captures. One of the most important aspects of astrophotography with a user collimatable telescope is the collimation itself. It's always down to you, the end user or me in this case, to make sure that things are running as well as they possibly can. Otherwise you can't expect your scope to be giving you the results that you're looking for if you haven't done your part. Now, what I've done here to basically set up this collimation test, I think my scope's currently perfect, but I'm gonna all the same just take you through what the star pattern looks like, uh, is I've chosen a star right up near the zenith as high as possible, so we're looking through the minimum of the Earth's atmosphere, so that any influence that the atmospheric distortions will have on these star patterns is gonna be as small as possible. We're gonna minimize that error now. I've got it centered in the field of view, and I've also got a crop, so it's appearing as big as possible. Uh, on my screen right here and basically I've got a short exposure time so it's currently running at 15.6 milliseconds at around about a middling gain this probably will need some adjustment on your end to get it just right for your telescope and the brightness of the star that you particularly are testing with now what I'm going to do in just a moment is I'm going to get up go to the telescope by the door I'm going to leave this entire thing up and running uh, real time so you can see the effects of what I'm about to uh, show you 
and I'm going to run the scope intra and extra focal. We're going to take it through its kind of range uh, just inside and just outside of focus to get those star patterns to emerge. Now what you're looking for ideally is a completely concentric pattern, sort of like a uh, Hall of Mirrors effect. Um, like the Looney Tunes cartoons for anybody who's seen those, the, the kind of end of that where it's like a, a hoop and a hoop and a hoop and it progressively getting smaller. Again, that kind of Hall of Mirrors effect, but I think rather than explaining it, I'm just going to go ahead and show you it right now. So keep your eyes on the screen right there. So as you can see, we're quite a ways out of focus now. That's extra focal moving towards intrafocal. It's looking nice and concentric. And now we're going extra focal. Uh, you can probably see some really bad thermals there, spoiling the view, but in between them, when it settles down, there's those moments where it looks really nice and clear like that and that looks almost perfect to me uh, further evidence of this is if I just run it again back through and bring it towards the correct side of focus the last thing you see is the central dot being surrounded by a ring of light a little halo So I'm going to go ahead and just leave this out of out of focus ever so slightly as I'm going to focus it with the batting off mask in a second. Sorry if you couldn't hear me properly there. Um, but hopefully that's a good demonstration of what a scope should look like when it's in good collimation. As you can see we've got that concentric pattern going on and on and on into the distance and down to a fine dot in the middle. We've still got a little bit of a wait before sand becomes visible, I don't know if you can just see through the trees there, that's the moon I'll have to turn the ISO right up to make this visible sorry about the noise in the image and just there on top of the tree line that's sand I need to wait for it to uh, appear from the opposite side of those into the clear sky Well guys, Saturn is now in full view and I have to say, what a view it actually is. Uh, I've started off this session with some visual observation and uh, I'm so glad I took the decision to do that rather than just leave the uh, camera in place the entire time. So I started off with this, which is a 10 millimeter long eye relief. I've had this thing about a decade. It's a pretty crap eyepiece, I'll be totally brutally honest with you. And uh, yeah, the views were okay but they were good enough that i wanted to actually fish out my only other eyepiece <laughs> which is one of these uh 28 millimeter two inch eyepieces from skywatcher that comes bundled with uh, a lot of their scopes uh, i got this one with my esprit 120 and i have to say the view is staggering even though it's not in any way a planetary eyepiece i'm getting such a chill down my spine looking at this planet through this thing I can see I can see four of Saturn's moons as plain as day really really tack sharp I can see uh, the Cassini division on the ring easily I can see the ring passing across the surface of Saturn you know going across the disk I can see a cloud band what looks like equatorially 
equatorial place, I'd say, pretty much smack across the centre of my view. And I also think at times I can see, potentially, Enceladus. <laughs> that sounds insane to see. I've just got a uh, quick image up on the screen there of uh, Saturn using um, Stellarium, that's the word. Uh, and basically just so I can qualify what it is I'm looking at and the moons I can see the, the four really plain ones are Rhea, Dion, Tethys and Titan they're completely plain to view but I'm sure I can keep seeing Enceladus just popping into view just for fleeting moments I have to say that's absolutely magic and you know something is lost in translation if you just stick constantly uh, to astrophotography and stuff I mean there's nothing wrong with that but if you do have an eyepiece and you can get up and look through the back of your scope then I think you owe it to yourself to have a go every now and again because uh, it has a way of making you feel connected almost to what you're looking at because it is such an analog experience you know that light is finishing its journey right at this very moment no digital translation it's just landing on my eye and I can see it it almost looks like I could reach out and grab that planet, that's wild. Alright then guys, so we've just reached 18 minutes past 1 actually in the morning, just this very moment. Now, um, basically you can probably see on the screen right here, I'm showing you on Stellarium first, what we're going to be taking a look at in just a moment. So, uh, we've got Saturn, Tethys, Titan, Rhea, Dione and Enceladus mainly going to be visible in this next uh screen capture that i'm showing you so if i just go ahead now over onto the remote desktop and show you saturn in the view right there you can see it's looking very poor and almost like it's out of focus but i promise it isn't this is perfectly focused uh, it's just being blurred so much by the atmosphere and uh, also you can see the effects of atmospheric dispersion so uh what we can see if this is coming through for you right now on the screen as you can see everything's got a red rim to the top then it's kind of green below that and blue at the very bottom of all that and if I increase the exposure on this and get these moons to start to kind of pop out and become visible for you you're probably going to see that effect uh, tenfold on those because they're going to act like a point source so uh, I'll just increase the gain too and really get them to show now hopefully that's visible for you guys as well uh, looking at this video so um, once it settles down a moment there you can see these star stars, these moons of uh, Saturn, which should be completely, you know, round dots, are actually appearing to be elongated into almost like traffic lights, like your finger or something. Uh, and you can see that spread of the spectrum of light. So you've got the reds, yellows, greens, blue, all in a line like this, and that is down to atmospheric dispersion. So. You can probably tell uh, I'm a little bit up against it making any sort of capture from my location right now just due to the elevation of this planet. I'm looking through so much atmosphere that it's dispersing all of that light and uh, going to make already something that's quite a challenging task uh, into probably just about unsurmountable. I'm not expecting much from this but all the same I'm going to capture what I can and share it with you regardless because uh, if ever there was a time to make the capture, it is in the next 10, 15 minutes or so, right as the planet's at its absolute highest. So I'm going to go ahead now and start making some planetary captures and uh, just see what it is we can get. I think um, I'll be going not with this full frame, but with a uh, cropped view. So perhaps 960 by 540. That's, you know, exactly like one quarter of 1080p. And... Uh, yeah, something like that is probably going to look decent, I hope, once I've stacked up enough frames. Well, I've gone ahead and made my first capture now, uh, 3,000 frames, and I thought, why not just double check focus once again? Uh, it's been about 10 minutes, and you never know, it could have shifted a little bit, but I also thought this was the perfect opportunity to show you just how difficult it actually is to try and get a good focus uh, when basically the atmosphere is making it so hard to see if you've got it right or not. So, uh, Again, just real time, I'm going to leave everything running just as it is and leave this view on the screen for you while I walk to the doorway where I can actually reach the focus knob of my telescope. And I'm going to take it in and out of focus uh, a couple of times. I'm going to go through a few passes and then you can see for yourself 
uh, what it actually looks like when it's out of focus, approaching, you know, critical focus, and then back out once again. So uh, I'm going to go do that right now. All right, so I'm going to start by moving the focus uh, out of focus, as you can see. Start bringing it in with counterclockwise movement. And I think that's probably about as good as it gets because now if I move it further, this is just a tiny movement and we're back out of focus. This has uh, gone too far, so I'll pass through once more. Nice and steady. Approaching focus. Still approaching. About as good as I think I can get it. And then if I move once more, you can see we're going back out of focus. These are tiny movements. Uh, it's not like I'm being drastic with this thing, but basically I'll try once more, just pass it through. That looks to be, once again, as good as I can get it. And we're about fourth time, just to make damn sure as well. Uh, Yeah, I'd say that's that's it. That's everything I can hope for. Rather amazingly, um, it looks it looks poor, doesn't it? I, I would say, but as you've just seen, at no point during that focus movement does it actually look good. So the best I could hope for is trying to focus on the contrast visible uh, in the Cassini division, just on the absolute edge of the rings there now. This is what I'm up against, and it is what it is. I'm not going to keep whining about it, but um, later on tonight, if I'm still uh, up and about, I might have a chance at capturing Jupiter. Um, Great Red Spot isn't in view or anything like that, and I'll probably just do it for a bit of fun, if nothing else, because uh, I've just double-checked on Stellarium, and that planet's going to actually reach 37.5 degrees, uh, I do believe. So... An extra 17 and a half degrees on top of what this one's just reached now it's actually at its highest and it's just barely over 20 degrees for me so uh very low indeed so almost double the elevation we'll have to see what difference um that makes it could be interesting for me to learn about anyway but i just thought i'd share that thought that might be interesting to some of you guys um let you know that it doesn't always look tack sharp that's uh that's for certain Alright then guys, so we've just gone two minutes past two in the morning as it happens, and as you can see, we're no longer looking at Saturn, I've actually got Jupiter on the screen right now, uh, and that's because Saturn is now past its best. Um, it's on the way back down into the Merc, not that it ever really got out of it, um, but even worse than that perhaps now, it's right above a neighbouring rooftop, and they've got a, quite a heat leaky roof, so uh, there's a lot a lot of shimmer happening and I think any chance I had of making any good captures on that planet now are gone for the night. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is. I've still got some data and I will be sharing it with you at the end. So uh, I just thought before I kind of sign off, I wanted to show you once more what a difference uh, 10 more degrees is going to make on atmospheric dispersion. So Saturn was at 20 degrees when we, take, uh, when we took a look at that and you could see those moons. The light from them was being kind of split like a prism and turned into a long strip with red, green, blue. Now if we take a look at Jupiter, which is currently at 30 degrees, if I just increase the exposure of this, do the same kind of test that we did for, uh, for Saturn's moons there, and you can probably see already these are a lot brighter, but the effect is far less pronounced, even with just 10 more degrees of uh, elevation. Getting that little bit more out of the murk there has uh, made that dispersion really quite negligible, I, I think, at least from what I'm used to seeing. So uh, it's more of a fringe now rather than a, a true elongation. These slightly ovaled are the, uh, are the moons, but nothing really desperate. But interestingly, at least you can see they're not turned into uh, thin little strips like Saturn's moons where that was... Uh, crazy to see. Um, Jupiter's looking quite promising, I mean there's nothing really too incredible on the cards happening with it tonight but still uh, it's just going to be a little bit of extra fun. I'm going to go take a look at it visually in a minute and uh, just try and wind down now for the rest of the night. So I'm going to leave 
this video there I think and uh, just as always take a moment to quickly say to you all thank you so 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 much for watching the videos liking commenting subscribing all the things that you do they all help me so much and also a very special thank you to everybody directly supporting the channel too and helping keep this whole thing alive really honestly and truthfully my heart goes out to you thank you so much indeed so uh I'm going to leave it there anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video, something slightly different to what I usually do, and uh, until next time, look after yourselves, and hopefully, clear skies.